Hi, everybody. It's uh, 3.42 in the afternoon on this chilly Thursday. Temperatures running a good 10, 12 degrees colder than normal for this final day of February. Meteorological spring, of course, is March 1 tomorrow. And, and at the time I hit record, I just hear some heavier showers kind of battering against my windows up here in Vancouver. So the headline is you're looking at it. The Pacific Northwest cold pattern to continue. In fact, there's not a lot of change in the air mass warming or cooling, it's plenty cold right now, all the way through, I'm looking at my notes, all the way through Tuesday of next week. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday into Tuesday, very little change. Look at the satellite picture. We'll look at the satellite picture in larger mode in a moment, but this is all cold air out of the Gulf of Alaska, just continuing to funnel showers in. A mix of snow showers continuing to be possible at lowest elevations, especially at night into early morning as the temperatures themselves are going to, at the surface, are going to cool a little bit, right? So we'll keep an eye on all of that. Here's that bigger uh, satellite loop um, off the uh, weather.gov website. And again, all the little dots are speckled um, clouds here. That's cold cumulus just feeding in a very numerous shower pattern. And the fact, if you look near shore and then you extend all the way back, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles offshore, there's very little change in the cloud signature. So that is a couple of days of very numerous showers. We have very numerous showers on Friday and we may on Saturday too. I think eventually Saturday, a few more breaks in the clouds and especially Sunday, I expect it to be a little bit drier, but uh, certainly tonight, certainly tomorrow, very active cold weather pattern continuing to feed in. I, I wanna show you now, this was earlier this morning. So I'm mainly going to, this is the tabular form. I'll read out the numbers I'm interested in because I know they're, they're small and hard to see, but these are the uh, the tabular precept numbers going back to yesterday, the front that came in last night, ending at uh, 4 a.m. this morning. So at that time, a story picked up right about two inches of rain, 1.99. There was a report that Long Beach had picked up something like, it was close to three and a half inches of rain. And the Grays River up in uh, that part of Southwest Washington went over its banks. Kelso, 1.19. Scapoos, over an inch. Portland, 0.85, 100. Now, the rain that we picked up today, pretty much all of these spots in the valley have now gone well over an inch for the past 24 hours. Salem, 0.93. Add the rain that we picked up today, you're well over an inch for the 24-hour period. And precip amounts out in the blues, Meacham, liquid moisture, 0 0.30. So some of these amounts were uh, were, were pretty good, and, and we're certainly add, adding to them, as I mentioned. Um, here's a look at where we are right now. So these will be the 330 temperatures. About the same. Vancouver 43, Salem 43, Portland 44, Sandy at 35 degrees. Sandy's been interesting because the radar, more than not, has shown snow in the air over Sandy. But nothing that I'm aware of has been sticking in the city as temperatures have held above freezing. It is chilly, 35, and certainly you folks have a reasonable chance at a thousand feet there of getting down to freezing tonight and seeing some sticking snow. So we'll keep an eye on that. Wind direction is still mainly from the south, although it's quite a bit calmer than it was. We've generally got sustained winds now, 10 to 15 miles per hour and some gusts no more than about um, 20 to 25 miles per hour. Um, I wanna show you a couple of things. Here's the Sunset Highway on the west slope, excuse me, on the east slope of the coast range, 35 degrees at 317 this afternoon. You can see the snow roadside. This was snow covered this morning, but then temperatures have popped above freezing and the pavement has melted uh, off the snow. We'll see the Coast Range highways gather snow cover again tonight and early tomorrow, and then they'll melt during the day and see improving conditions. We'll see that pattern repeat the next couple of days. Of course, when you get up into the mountain, different story. Here's Government Camp, Highway 26, not in horrible shape. ODOT's got some, uh, you know, some spots where you can see the, the pavement. 28 degrees up there. Santiam Pass right here. I know these are small. Santiam and Willamette Pass is absolutely snow covered. Siskiyou Summit, good shape. These storms have just uh, not produced heavy enough moisture to really cause problems down there. It's 33 degrees. There's Cabot Hill out over the blues at 32. Precip spin light enough to 84 is generally just wet and in pretty good shape. So what I've done with snow levels, I'm going to talk more about this coming up here in just a second. Generally, the snow level moving forward is going to be around 1,000 feet to at times above to at times a little bit below for sticking snow. 
So it's just going to be cold. And there's really very little change all the way into Tuesday, as you can see down here in my snow levels. Um, four to eight inches of snow tomorrow, four to six Saturday, three to five Sunday, a little less Monday, one to four, a little less on Tuesday, zero to two. But certainly a lot more, plenty of powder to come. And if you look at the 24-hour snow amounts, Timberline 18, Meadows 14, Ski Bowl 6. These were updated about two hours ago. So um, snowpack is now, I, I just checked and I wrote it down, 84, 84% of normal today. So the snowpack definitely improving. And really, I mean, you want to be 100%. Heck, you want to be above that. But 84% is a pretty good snowpack for water storage up there in the mountain uh, right now. Okay, this is interesting. I want to show this. This was this morning. At 5.14 a.m., this is the snow radar courtesy of KGW-TV. And at the time, it showed snow. We actually had snow sticking to the roadways over the coast range. Had really good snow rates up in the Cascades, and we racked up inches and inches of snow this morning. Had rain along 84 out into the gorge. What you, The city names aren't here, but look how far down the snow extends into the Cascade foothills. This was showing snow for hours over Sandy and over Damascus. But when we check surface reports... It was mostly just wet with either chunky rain or just rain. So remember that the radar sets in the hills out of Scappoose. I think it's at 1,700 feet. It's at least around, it's well over 1,000 feet. The radar dome is pretty high in the hills above Scappoose. So that radar do dome shoots out. So by the time it gets down to Oregon City, which at one point it was showing snow, um. I think, I think the radar dome, correct me, it's around 1,000 feet to higher. And by the time that beam gets down to Oregon State, I think it was shooting it at 1,700 feet. So that was the radar showing snowflakes at 1,700 feet. Obviously, that snow has plenty of time now to melt the chunky rain or a raindrop. So this doesn't always mean you've actually got snow that you see when you're driving. It doesn't always mean you've got sticking snow, but it does mean it's cold. The snow levels are certainly pretty close to where you are, if all that made made sense. Because we're probably going to see a lot of snow on radar at times in the coming days. And maybe where you are, you notice that it's raining. So that's a little bit about what's going on with that. I think this graphic, my headlines here, really perfectly sums up what the forecast is through Sunday into Monday and even Tuesday morning. Cold weather pattern into next week. Uniform sticking snow levels somewhere between 1,000 and 1,500 feet. And by uniform, I mean overall, that's where temperatures have a chance to be 32 degrees for an extended period of time and for sticking accumulating precipitation. And truthfully, the uniform sticking snow level is going to be pretty close to this number. Over a 24-hour period, it's going to be pretty close to 1,500 feet. At times, it can come down to 1,000. But, but there you go. Now, with that said, heavier showers come through during the day, valley rain, snow mix at times. Temperatures inherently are going to drop into the 30s at night. Possible low snow spots anywhere. Most of us at low elevations, I've got us above freezing. But I could be off by a couple of degrees. So don't be surprised if you wake up to a dusting one of these mornings in your neighborhood. It's certainly at least possible. And then you would get up to 40 or better during the day. And of course, it would all melt. But this really sums up, I think, nicely what, what, what the forecast is. Um, I do want to show you what the latest uh, national blended model is showing for snow. This is four o'clock this afternoon, showing snow up here in the Cascades. Snow rates have really backed off for the time being. And here we are tomorrow morning. Now we picked up what we talked about, fresh snow over the coast range and maybe over those highways again. We've got eight inches of snow. This says between four o'clock this afternoon and four o'clock tomorrow morning up on Mount Hood. That's certainly possible. That's probably going to be on the high end. Most of these kind of brighter colors are eight inches of snow. The blue colors are six inches or less. Notice it's no snow along 84 in the gorge. And then as I just play this, let's go ahead and play it uh, into Saturday afternoon into the weekend, shall we? This just keeps racking up snow in the Cascades. It shows there could be another total of 20 inches of snow. I mean, if we go eight tomorrow, maybe up to eight on Saturday, there's 16. So yeah, it's a possibility. More than anything, what this shows you is into Saturday that we continue to see low snow levels and snow, especially up in the mountains, sticking and to some extent accumulate. Now, in the coast range, we know a lot of that's going to be melting off during the day, something that we saw today. Here's your upper flow pattern. This is this afternoon. Again, the blue contour is more or less the polar jet down in the northern California. But the moisture, the heavier moisture has been more around where this low is. And that's here in Oregon and up into Washington. 
So again, these low, we talked about this yesterday. Here's tomorrow. A, a new low comes down. It's a little, little bit lower. That certainly could help produce instability and, and produce some spotty low snow spots that we'll have to keep an eye on, especially Friday night into Saturday morning. Here's Saturday morning. Look at the cold trough. Now it's starting to come in. That is potentially an increased chance of low snow spots. And then we warm up somewhat in the afternoon, but we're still in this cold trough on Sunday. I hope you can tell that the trough is kind of broadening out. So that's kind of a weakening. You would assume maybe some a moderation of the air mass, but not much because the polar jet down here is all the way to Reno. This is early Sunday morning. And then we stay in the cold air on Monday. Now here we are, are moderating a bit on Tuesday. The polar jet comes up into Portland. That could be a, maybe a rising snow level up to 2,000 feet during the day. Maybe a little warming next week, midweek into Thursday. Forecast models are hinting there could be some dry weather, but some of them are also hinting at least a shower chance. And then we go into the next weekend. This is uh, Saturday, March 9th. Here's another trough, not as cold, but certainly some showers continuing. And you see how that broadens in the polar jet going into Sunday morning, comes right back down over our area. So that's a snow level at least back down to 2,000 feet. So maybe there's some warming and a little dryness uh, somewhere around Thursday, Friday of next week, but then we get back into some colder weather. That's what it's showing right now. Now, tomorrow is the very first day of March, right? March versus meteorological spring. Here's an update to what the National uh, Weather Service or NOAA's um, prediction center is, is saying for the month of March. This is updated. A couple days ago, the prediction center of NOAA was going the Northwest, Oregon, and Washington above normal temperatures, dry precipitation. Wow, it's going to be nice. Look at how they've changed it in just the past 48 hours. Now, all of a sudden, let me go back to this. Now, all, well, I guess I've got to leave it there. Let, let me click on it, actually. Okay, thank you. Now, all of a sudden, we're in the equal chances. This means Noah's lost their confidence. They can't say if we're going to be warm or cold. We may be near normal. And they've also, I think I can back up out of this, and they've also lost, uh, sorry, their confidence in terms of us being dry. Now they've got us kind of edging more into equal chances to maybe above normal precept. They do show precip above normal in the Bay Area of California and into Nevada. And we talked about this several days ago, I think even last week. The fact that one thing I did see is how was, as we got into March, we're going to get back into more of a typical El Nino flow with the lows centered down into California, meaning they would get the heavy precip. We would get our share, but California would get the heaviest precip. This is what this updated outlook from NOAA is showing. So we'll see. But clearly they backed off on just how warm March is going to be or not be, which is something I talked about a handful of days ago. So we'll see how all that plays out. In the meantime, here's my seven-day forecast, courtesy of Hazel Dell Tire Pros up here in Vancouver. Tomorrow, 35 to 45. Those are similar temps to what we had today. Same thing Saturday, 34 to 45. Uh, eventually, especially Saturday, we'll get into an increasing chance with some breaks. That could lead to some hail, spotty downpours, a snow mix at times. Sunday, a wintry mix, absolutely in the morning. Daytime I-46, I think fewer showers, and then fewer showers overall on Monday and Tuesday. Still a chance of some snow showers at night into early morning. Generally, I've got temperatures above freezing, except for Sunday morning. And then daytime highs next week getting a little warmer. And then we talked about maybe Thursday's dry. If Thursday's dry next week, we'll see highs up into the 50s. But this is a calming pattern, I think, anywhere from, well, really Monday starts to calm us out somewhat. It's just going to take a while to warm up. All right, if you haven't hit subscribe, please do so if you enjoyed this video. I'm meteorologist Rod Hill. And for now, I'll, I'll say uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.